I'm Calvin Ludwig. I'm a third year medical student at Tufts University in Boston, Massachusetts. I'd like to really give a huge thank you to the New England Neurosurgical Society for organizing today's conference and also for the privilege of presenting this morning. I'm sending my thanks also to the really distinguished panel of invited speakers and other presenters who are here with us. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about predicting the rupture status of cerebral aneurysms and how we're trying to use this new tool called radiomics to help us make those predictions. My collaborators and I have no disclosures. Let's start with an aneurysm. It's an abnormal dilatation or outpouching of an artery due to the weakening of the vessel wall. So here's a volumetric reconstruction of a real patient aneurysm branching off from its parent cerebral vasculature. And the scary part about aneurysms is that when they rupture, the resultant brain bleed is called subarachnoid hemorrhage. And it is quite deadly, still today, carrying a morbidity that's reported between 10 and 20% despite um, advances in management. Now, when a patient presents with an asymptomatic, unruptured cerebral aneurysm, it's the size of the aneurysm that's the principal factor at this point that physicians use to make clinical management decisions. And generally, aneurysms that are seven, or seven to 10 millimeters or greater are indicated for surgical management. Radiomics. Radiomics is a recently introduced automatic image processing tool for pixel by pixel, or in the case of a three-dimensional object, voxel by voxel extraction of object features. And the four types of features that radiomics automatically extracts are listed here on the right. There are features based on pixel intensity histograms, on the three-dimensional shape of the object, uh, pixel weight, uh, excuse me, pixel texture matrices, and pixel wavelet transforms. And radiomics uh, features have been evaluated in really a variety of medical imaging contexts, including differentiating glioblastoma and anaplastic oligodendroglioma, two primary brain cancers, dif uh, differentiating different subtypes of lung cancer from histopathological specimens, and then even one that I found was assessing the degree of liver fibrosis from elastography, a special type of ultrasound. So my goal here today was to evaluate how well these radiomic, how well these automatic radiomics features predict the rupture status of intracranial aneurysms. So here's the plan. I started with 353 three-dimensional rotational angiography volumes of cerebral aneurysms, 123 of which were already ruptured but pre-vasospasm at the time of imaging. Then what I did from every single aneurysm is extract established features, that is those that have been previously reported on and validated in the literature. And then I extracted from every single aneurysm 13 shape radiomics features. For a univariate analysis, I started with testing the association between established features and rupture status, and then radiomics features and rupture status using a student's t-test. Then for a multivariate analysis, I did stepwise forward feature selection of established and radiomics features separately, each individually, for rupture status discrimination. I just want to give you a sense of what the input to radiomics is, what we're dealing with. It's these volumetric reconstructions of real patient aneurysms. And I just want to point out that we chop off the aneurysm. We're chopping it off from the parent vasculature so that we can study the size, shape, and other morphology of the aneurysm in isolation. Now, let me give you some highlights of the established and radiomics features. Starting with established, I wanted to point out the neck average, which describes how big the neck of the aneurysm is coming off of that parent vessel. The height-width ratio captures how long and skinny the aneurysm is. And then the aspect ratio, which compares the volume of the bulk of the aneurysm, the body, and then to the neck of the aneurysm through which, through which blood travels. 
now I'm pointing out two radiomics features. Elongation, similar but not quite the same as height-width ratio. Elongation captures how long and skinny, like a snake, the aneurysm is. And then the flatness. This one gets at how flat, like a disc or a pancake, the shape is. Taking a look first at the univariate analysis, that student's t-test for the association with rupture status. Taking a look first at, among established features. Um, the features with the top two area under the curves for rupture status discrimination, it was a tie here, aspect ratio and non-sphericity at 0.75, and then the height width ratio and size ratio at 0.73. Now among radiomics features, the top two AUCs here were elongation and flatness. Now you wonder why I introduced those in particular. Uh, it, uh, these came in at 0.71 and 0.72. Uh, but notice, these two, these top two AUCs for radiomics features are less than the top two AUCs for established features. It's a similar story in the multivariate analysis, the stepwise forward feature selection. When I applied stepwise forward feature selection to established features, it recruited these three features and built a model with AUC of 0.79. Same thing, stepwise forward feature selection among radiomics features, it recruited these three and obtained, or built a model that obtained AUC equal to 0.75, once again inferior to the established features. Wrapping up a little bit here, uh, a clear advantage still of radiomics is its single platform use. I used 3D Slicer, it's a software that I did the entire pipeline of image processing, segmentation, and feature measurement. In both univariate and multivariate analysis, like I said, established features, those previously reported features, did outperform radiomics features in discriminating the rupture status of our aneurysms. That being said, we still believe, with some tweaking, with some improvements, that radiomics does have the potential to become a good tool of interest in aneurysm research. And now, let me give you a little taste, a little, little introduction of how we're thinking about enhancing radiomics, which we're calling, aptly named, enhanced radiomics. At this point, our volumes have random XYZ orientation in three space, meaning that radiomics automatically computes dimensions according to this sort of arbitrary alignment in three space. But if we shift around the aneurysm, if we reorient it, twist it around, such that the neck plane of the aneurysm lies perfectly flat on the XY plane, then we can force radiomics to compute a true height above the parent vessel and a true orthogonal width of the aneurysm. And that allows us to compute some new features. When we include those features in a similar stepwise forward feature selection, we notice here in teal are those enhanced, is the enhanced radiomics model. We noticed that uh, the enhanced features predict rupture status better than default radiomics in blue, dark blue, and about the same in red as established features. Uh, we did a stratification by the location of the aneurysm, uh, but that, I just wanted to demonstrate that Enhance seems to be working well. I'm part of the Cerebrovascular Hemodynamics Lab at Tufts Medical Center, headed up by Dr. Malik. Here are my references, and with that, I'd like to thank the NENS once again for the privilege of speaking this morning and presenting among such fine speakers, and I'll take any questions at this time. Well, Calvin, that was uh, excellent. Uh, very, very cutting edge and very interesting work. Um, Thank you. I think, let's see, is there a, a question? I'm not, while we're gathering questions, I'll ask you one. So, I mean, one is a comment that, you know, even if the automated approach were to perform slightly worse to an expert looking at the films, then it still has an advantage because it's automated. So I wouldn't uh, minimize the importance of that. But 
it would also seem like the real application would not be in predicting which aneurysms have ruptured, but rather predicting which aneurysms are going to rupture in the future. And I was just wondering if you could speak to that for a moment. We'd like to see radiomics eventually uh, be used as an adjunct to a professional eye um, in looking at those asymptomatic incidental aneurysms that are found often during imaging for a different reason and hopefully being able to see, oh, you know, is this aneurysm likely to rupture? Maybe we can risk, risk stratify it um, before it actually ruptures. Um, and we can, maybe we can clip it before anything actually happens. But we don't want to unnecessarily go ahead and do an invasive procedure if the aneurysm is unlikely to rupture. All right, excellent. Well, very, very nice work and congratulations to you and your group. Uh, thank you so much for presenting. You're very welcome, thank you.